Buenos días a todos. Buenos días a todos y a todas. Bienvenidos. Y arrancamos, ¿no, Alex? Claro. Vamos a ver qué hay en la mochila de un hacker. Nosotros venimos preparados. Llevamos nuestra propia mochila. ¿Lleváis mochila vosotros? ¿Algunos sí? Pues... Vamos a ver. Sí, veo por ahí mochilas. Algunas las veo y otras a lo mejor. Bueno, pues habrá que ver qué hay que poner en esa, en esa mochila. Vamos ¿no? a contaros qué es lo que podemos poner en, en una mochila. Por eso hemos traído las nuestras propias. Una muy cargada. Sí, que pesa bastante. La otra descargada. No pesa, pero a lo mejor hay cosas que sí que pesan dentro. ¿Vale? Y bueno, pues vamos allá. Venga, ¿no? vamos a contarlo. Uy. Esto, esto... Muy bien. Dice que no. Dice que no. <risa> bueno, lo voy pasando yo si queréis. Bueno, presentarnos, ya nos, ya nos han presentado. Well, we've already been introduced, but I just want to say that if you use Twitter, you have our Twitter accounts there. Uh, you can look, keep for, look for us and uh, check what we are posting. Alex is Alex Aliaga Sec and Yolanda is Yokomo. Okay, so let's see. What are we going to talk about in this presentation? Well, we are going to explain what a hacker needs to put inside his backpack. We're not just going to talk about physical things, we're going to talk about more interesting things behind physical, besides physical things. And what we want to tell you is how, little by little, you can fill your backpack with experience, with training, in order to become real hackers. So, because we, what we want to explain to you is our personal experience and things that we found important in, in a hacker's career. Um, finally, we want to to remind you that you have to put whatever you want in, you, in your backpack. You can take into account what we've explained to you, but in the end, it's up to you and you're free to decide. So before deciding what to put inside a hacker backpack, we should try to explain what a hacker is. Do you know what a hacker is? What's a hacker? Okay, we have more people coming in the room. Well, if we have to define what a hacker is, we would say that, or well, at least Alex and I agree on this definition, and I hope you agree on this definition too. We would say that a hacker is an expert on uh, cybersecurity that tries to do the best and that tries to go beyond uh, normal thinking by applying lateral thinking. He is willing to learn and uh, wants to um, outdo himself or herself in order to solve problems. There is nothing here that could make you think that a hacker is a cyber criminal, right? No, nothing at all. But it's something that people usually think about when they listen to the word hacker. But it doesn't have a negative connotation, it's positive. But even though all of us probably already know it, a, a hacker is not related to cyber criminal. A hacker is an expert in cyber security who is willing to learn and wants to solve problems for the common good. So this is why it's important for a hacker to have a good backpack, right? Yes, exactly. And why are we talking about a backpack? Well, we have two backpack, backpacks here instead of one. One is empty and one is filled with things. But we've, we're talking about a backpack because in a backpack a hacker can put anything he needs because a hacker is a cybersecurity expert that needs to apply lateral thinking and he needs to have something to transport everything he is going to need. Well, so, for example, in a backpack we should have a computer with stickers, of course. Any important hacker needs to have a computer and the computer needs to have a lot of stickers, something like that. The stickers depend on the taste of the user, but you need to have a lot of stickers so that people can know that you're a hacker. You also need a sweatshirt, a sweatshirt with a hood, probably. But we, we, didn't, we are not wearing a sweatshirt. Alex, yeah, I prefer wearing blazers and I prefer wearing uh, shirts. Yeah, but it's true that in films, usually hackers are wearing these sweatshirts. Well, but I'm a hacker and I'm not wearing that type of 
clothing. Well, it's not needed. So hackers do not always have to wear a shirt. What else? Well, several gadgets. Well, I brought a lot of gadgets because I love communication. And I always have gadgets in my backpack. I here have a radio. Here I have a modem. I usually take a lot of things with me in my backpack. So if you see that Alex is coming closer to you with a backpack, you will see that he is connecting and disconnecting devices. Okay, so we need a computer, a sweatshirt or all other type of clothing and several gadgets. Okay, if you have that stuff, you are already a hacker, right? So uh, am I already a hacker if I have that inside? Yes, you and everyone here in the room. Okay, so we finished with our presentation. No, we haven't finished with our presentation. But again, why are we wearing a backpack? Well, because in the end, we need to start somewhere. When we want to become cybersecurity experts, we have to, when we start thinking that we really like that field, sometimes we don't know what to do. We have a backpack that we can fill with things, but we need to have clear ideas in our mind. Before starting thinking that we want to work on this, we need to start thinking, first of all, about motivation. It is very important to be motiva motivated. We have to ask ourselves very simple questions that are going to be basic for us, for our career. For example, why do you want to study cybersecurity? Is it because it's fashionable? Because I'm watching a lot, a lot of cybersecurity series on TV? Because there are a lot of news on TV? Or, or because I'm passionate about it? Well, I think that's basic. If you're not passionate about this, it doesn't make sense. You have to be sure that you want to study this. Even though in the TV series, the cybersecurity seems very fun, this profession requires a lot of your time and a, a lot of hours experimenting and testing and trying things. So even though it seems silly, we have to ask ourselves these questions. We don't have to be thinking about what's, uh, fas what's fashionable, what's not. When I started working in this field, I realized that I was passionate about this and I'm lucky enough to be working as a hacker because that's my my passion and time flies for me when I'm working and that's the most wonderful thing that can happen to you and I completely agree with that even though I've been trained as a journalist I've started working uh, in the field of cybersecurity and I've realized that I really like it and it's true that people from different backgrounds are working in cybersecurity, but it's important that you like cybersecurity. Maybe you start doing, you start studying cybersecurity, and you realize that you don't like it, but it's okay. Also, something else that you need is attitude. You need to be willing to learn all the time. If you don't, if you are not willing to do that, you are not going to go anywhere. Because if we, you want to become a cybersecurity professional, you are going to get it if you have that attitude. If you spend hours learning, if you are able to adapt to any situation, this is not easy. We are not always going to find the solution to all of the problems that are happening. We need to learn to look for alternatives, to look for different solutions to problems, and this means having the right attitude. And probably you have also people around you that are already working on cybersecurity that you may know personally or, or may, for example, you already know us, you have our Twitter accounts. Ask people around you, ask people that you know about that, about the work, what they started doing. Being here is already something that speaks, uh, speaks up for you. And also, of course, you, we are here a lot of experts that, uh, that know about cybersecurity, but do not just think about people here in this auditorium, in the other auditorium. People that are sitting around you may have a lot of knowledge that may also help you. So don't be afraid. Uh, contact and talk to the people that's here with you. Talk to people that's around you. 
Not just the speakers here are a tool that you can use. Anyone that's here in this room may be on stage. The fact that we are here, it doesn't mean that 20, in 20 minutes we are going to be here sitting with you. In fact, we are going to keep on enjoying this event with the rest of the people here afterwards. And regarding cybersecurity, there are many itineraries that you can follow. It's like TV. You, there are so many channels to choose that you need to know what you really like and what you're good at. Because in the end, you start experimenting with a lot of things. You start trying and you think, OK, I want to do pen testing, risk uh, management. You don't really know. There are many things to do. You can start trying different things. And maybe you, you realize that you're good at mobile phone, uh, cyber security, try different things. Try try as many things as you can, and at one point you will, you will realize that you are good at something, and you will be willing to learn more about a specific field, and this is the moment in which you would have, find, you would have uh, found your vocation. So it's normal that in the beginning you don't know exactly what, you, what to do, or it, it's okay, there is not a problem, you have to try different things. But of course, do not start with the most complex things, start with simple things, start by reading because you have to read a lot, you have to learn a lot. And in the end, the key of success does not only lie on technical training, I mean technical training and in technical knowledge is basic, but attitude is basic too. You're will be willing to learn and doing doing new things. It is uh, what's going to make you grow in your field. And uh, for example, I started in my room. My room looked like a laboratory. My parents were sick sick of me because I had a lot of computers in my room. You're saying it looked like in the past as it now it was a normal room. Okay, now it's quite similar actually, but this was my motivation to learn and to do different things, and this is what you have to do. You have, and, and now you have a lot of resources. There are manuals, there are guidelines, there are conferences such as this one. And well, people that are studying right now also count on something which is basic. You have a lot of time right now. You are in the in the period of life in which you have a lot of time for you because as time goes goes by, time is going to limit. So even if you think that you have a lot of exams and things to do, you have plenty of time. It's true that when you're a student, you don't think that you have a lot of free time, but enjoy that you are free enough to do a lot of things with your time and because you will realize later that uh, things and life gets more complex. I always like to say that when I stop liking what I'm doing, I will do something else because now this is my passion, this is what I do it. Do it. And besides being my profession, this is a game for me. I'm having fun doing my job. And that's the best thing that can happen to anyone. So let's start filling our backpack. What should we have in our backpack? Of course, a computer. Without a computer, we are not going to be able to do anything. You can choose the computer that you want to. Uh, of course, getting to know operating systems is uh, important. Gadgets also are needed because I, for example, liked radio frequency and the field of radio frequency, so I had a lot of gadgets related to that, but depending on what you do, you would, you would have different gadgets. But you have to start filling your backpack with things that are going to help you, uh, with which you will be playing, you, you're going to be playing. My backpack is quite heavy, but you're not going to fill the backpack in just in one day. And you don't have to spend a lot of money on the first day on many gadgets that you don't know how to use. You're going to be buying gadgets little by little when you find out what you like, what you don't like. Um, so it's not that you have to buy a lot of things in your backpack without a, a meaning. It's not that you're going to arrive to a store and you're going to say, please, can you uh, fill my backpack? 
And besides that, you need a lot of books. You need to read a lot. You need to be on different forums. You need to participate. This is a technology world which progresses very fast. And there are emerging technologies that are changing techniques, tactics, procedures of cyber criminals change and increase. And you need to be up to date and you need to know what's happening around you. And you're only going to be able to do that by reading. I have an iPad and next to my bed. And before going to bed, I spend one hour reading because technology moves so fast that if I don't do that, the, I, I will be lost. I would be lost. And if you think that you are allergic to books, reading means also reading Twitter, reading forum, contacting people that are publishing interesting things. Reading means reading anything. Of course, you need to read books too. Even if you don't like them, you need to read books, PDFs, etc. But also, you can read in other type of formats, such as specialized forum, uh, different channels in which experts participate. This is also a way of learning. So this is already accepted. And once we have this clear, we will start finding out our own path. There are different possible uh, fields. You can become a security engineer, a security architect. You can be a computing or cybersecurity consultant and help companies. You can be a pen tester. Uh, I mean, you can both try to to devote to some of these fields. Some uh, teams are going to spend time trying to attack vulnerable systems in order to find vulnerabilities. Some other will try, some other teams will try to defend, to look for best ways of defending equipment. If you are defending in the defender's team, you need to know also how the bad guys are going to attack. If you never tried techniques that are used in pen testing, you are not going to know that. So that's another knowledge that is going to bring you value. But also, sometimes you can gather with a group of people in order to do this job and try things. For example, you can meet with your friends and sometimes be the attacker, sometimes be the defender or the other way around. You have many possibilities here and you have a lot of options. There are many virtual machines, virtual equipments that with, with which you can play with, which you can uh, try what you, your knowledge. You can uh, uh, try to configure it, your own virtual equipments and uh, try to attack them and defend them. And this is not just something that you can do in your professional time. You can also incorporate this into your free time because nowadays technology allow, allows us to create micro spaces in which we can play and learn. So do not think that you are just going to be able to start working as a defender or attacker. Uh, when you start working in a company, you can try things right now. Uh, you also have to learn programming languages. This is very important. You can any language that that you like, Python, Golang, etc. This is going to help you a lot solving the problems, operating systems. That's that's very important. So you have to learn about Linux. Every operating system that you can uh, find, try this operating system. Try to install it. Uh, and try to play with the setups. Um, all these things are going to give you knowledge that will help you when you start working in cybersecurity. Also, networks, communications, um, social media. Cybersecurity involves many different uh, disciplines. You need to know a little bit of every, everything. And if you know about communication, about switching uh, switches management. This is also going to help you when you start working as a cybersecurity um, professional and you have to solve a cybersecurity problem. Because getting to know everything that's inside a company is going to help you understand what's happening. And I'm not just talking about technical stuff. There is something that we usually forget about. We also need to understand what the legal framework is.
In order to solve a security uh, incident, you, it's not that you just have to be a technical expert. You need to know the legislation. You know, you need to know how to speak, how to communicate. It is basic for you to learn to use both technical language but also communication language because when you have to explain something to your manager or when you have to explain something um, before a committee committee you will have to use a very different language and you need to practice that too so if you have the opportunity to speak in public make the most of it of it because this is going to also to help you become better professionals and well as our, as Yolanda was saying I have a lot of things in my room he was saying that his parents were sick of his room because he had a lot of gadgets there. That's true. When I was living with my parents, I had a lot of gadgets. This is the the latest version I have right now in my room. And, uh, well, all these gadgets are from a very well-known manufacturer that you may know. Uh, but, uh, and, and with all these materials, I started creating my own laboratory. I have different Wi-Fi, different uh, VLANs. I have something, some things that not even companies have. And these, all these things allow me to, to experiment, to try things up. Because, well, he's a professional, as uh, we know, that is working as a cybersecurity expert. And when he wants to uh, be better, to improve himself, he does this thing. He tries in his own laboratory. He meets with some friends in order to, to, to test things. Yes, of course, I have my own laboratory. I have limited Wi-Fi. I have firewalls with different network interfaces. I have different uh, VPNs. I have different things that allow me to try different things. I do telegram integrations, etc. And everything that I explained to you before, um, language, uh, programming language, languages, networking, etc. All these knowledges, I'm applying them at home. And you don't need to have a high budget in order to create your own laboratory. You can work uh, in many different ways. You only need to have the right attitude and be willing to learning. Also, you can create your own internet. As Yolanda was saying, I practice with my friends. I have a VPN created with my friends, and we have our own DNS servers, vulnerable machines that we can try to attack. We have firewalls. We have different uh, services in which we can break into. Because my friends also love this uh, same thing as me, and this allow us. This allows us to to learn, for example. I've seen that this happens. Let's see how this would behave in our own micro um, space, micro cyberspace. It seems a little bit weird to say you can create your own internet, but this is something that you can really do. Because if you screw it up in this fake internet, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Because you, we can all learn from our mistakes. If things do not work for us uh, uh, once or uh, twice, you can keep on trying. I prefer, of course, messing it up in my own internet than messing it up at my own work. Because And also you may find interesting things. For example, the fact of having my own network I learned and showed me how my TV was communicating with other services. Uh, I could take an SML file and send it somewhere. I mean, you can research or, and, and start writing your own blog or a forum, or you can go to a conference and tell about your own experience, about what you found in your own uh, internet or in your own house. So make the most of it. And in the end, something, in, and, and this is the last uh, thing I want to mention. Again, we would like to highlight that you have to read a lot, feed your own social media feeds, look for the pages, the websites that you like the most, um, use Twitter, participate in forum, work on your personal image by and work on yourself by working with other experts, with friends, go to different conferences. This, all these things are very important and very enriching. And well, as we are saying, it is very important to attend different events. You are going to be able to meet a lot of people, not just speakers, as I said before. 
uh, you're not just going to see um, face to face people that you may have known on social media. Also, you can know other experts that are attending the event with you. So don't be afraid of that. If you see someone you want to approach, do it. Talk to that people, ask questions, because these people is going to help you uh, know more things and they are going to help you uh, decide what you want to do. So you have to go to different events, you have to share your knowledge to because even though if you don't know a lot about something, this knowledge may be very useful for for someone else. So you have to there to, to, to speak in public in order to share also your knowledge. And there are different forums in which you can do that. So get involved in all these things. And also you can even organize these type of events or you can help organizers of an event you know that to uh, to to create events such as this one for example you, you can come up with an event of cyber security in your own high school which is also interesting to it's true that organizing an event may be complicated and it is time consuming but it is very important to spread knowledge and to create this type of events and I'm saying so because I'm an organizer of an event of this type here in Valencia. So whenever, if you don't find events that may be interesting for you, for you try to organize them yourself. This is going to allow you to get to know people from the field, from the sector. Sometimes you will be attending a conference, sometimes you will be organizing a conference. And in the end, you are going to get to know many experts and many professionals that uh, will uh, give you many ideas. And this, all these things are going to enrich your backpack. Also, repositories are important. This is a way of sharing too. You can use different repositories to share uh, knowledge, knowledge or experiments in which you're working. This is, this is going to help you show that you have the right attitude, you, that you are motivated, and that this is going to make you outstand from the rest of the people. Because there may be people doing very interesting things that don't make these things visible. But it's important to, to make things visible, visible, and this is going to help you outstand. For example, in a in an interview, in a, in a job interview, you're going to be able to show your motivation on a field in which you are interested. That's true. I've interviewed people uh, to join my team, and I ask these people if they have repositories in which in things in which they are participating, all these things are important. If you showed me that you have the right attitude and that you are motivated about, about cyber security and that you want to um, to stand out and to do yourself, this is very important. For example, having blogs is very important too. Having uh, participating in repositories. I mean, you, maybe the interviewer may ask you that questions, even if he has or she has looked for that information before. So uh, you are going to be visible if you participate in all these repositories and forums. Sharing your knowledge, your knowledge is very positive. You can use different channels. Technology now allows us to write and to participate in many different platforms. Share information in your social network. Become a reference person, uh, a reference in, in sharing in this type of cybersecurity information. This is going to help you create your personal image and your professional image. Also, you need to take care of your network, of your contact network. It is true that it's important to participate, to read, uh, or to write on a blog. But it's also important to have a contact network. And, and, for example, you also need to be very present on uh, social media such as LinkedIn, etc. Yeah, for me, this is it is very important to socialize through social media. So it's not a fact of accumulating followers or contacts. You don't have to um, just add people. I love 
meeting the, peop the people or, or the person that may be uh, behind an avatar. I like meeting face to face these people, these um, the people that I follow. It's just not a matter of accumulating followers. It's a matter of getting to know the people that's behind that. And I've been lucky enough to meet face to face people that I've contacted through social media. And in the end, here we all get along. So we have created huge group of friends that after conventions we go out for a dinner and it creates and generates a unity because to look for your uh, contact network is quite valuable. You need to have all those contacts in your backpack in addition to your laptop and all the gadgets. That's the value that you add into that empty backpack, in the symbolic backpack, because generating that contact network is going to uh, give you more opportunities. If you open a profile in social networks, just to see what they're publishing, you're not going to grow in the social part. You need to communicate with each other. You need to be glad for all the people's success. You need to uh, share your success. So the social part includes fora, social media, and social networks. In addition, you need to fool your uh, inner uh, backpack. I always carry out empty uh, when I go to school in order to raise awareness within among uh, children and teenagers. So that's what you need to put into your empty backpack. You need to find your own differential value in order to promote yourselves, you know, to know how to offer yourself on social media and on social networks. And that's why you need to analyze yourselves. You need to think what makes you unique. And in order to figure out what value you can contribute with to society and to the field of cyber security, you need to analyze yourselves. You need to see what you can highlight, but you also need to take into account the other's opinion, what they think of you, what they value as positive and as negative from you. Talk to each other because you need to get that feedback in order to know uh, what to do next, what your next steps will be. So in addition to analyzing yourself, you need to ask the others around you to see how they see you. You need to have your own interview, but it is important to have into account the external opinion on yourself, because maybe you do not appreciate uh, those things that other people may um, may appreciate. Some people will, will tell you, hey, you're very good at this. You need to keep on working on that. You need to keep on developing that attitude. So you need to have your vision. What's your professional dream? What are the values you identify yourself with? And within that inner analysis, you need to incorporate the opinion of people around you. And you need to find your differential value, your added value. To, to which you have to add all the uh, skills and abilities. And that's very important because you need to outstand from the rest of people with your new value. I told you before that you have more time now, uh, but your training will never be over. Even if you have a degree in a university, a master's degree, because you need to keep on uh, continuously learning. And technology is not static. Technology is always advancing. Criminals, cyber criminals, will always uh, be improving. So it requires from you to keep on learning because every day you find new stories, new kind of cyber crimes. Two days without reading the technology news, it is like uh, 10 years went by. So you need to add more things to that physical backpack. 
you have the physical backpack and your inner backpack, your brain, your skills, your values, attitude, and passion, of course. If you're not passionate, if you're not willing, then it doesn't make any sense. Whatever you do, you need to do it with passion because you will convey that passion to the others. And when somebody is passionate about something, you can notice it. Their eyes are different, the way of speaking about it is different, and that is very appreciated, that is very valuable. If you like it, if it's your, uh, if, if it's your willingness, if this is your passion, go for it. So what professional skills are more appreciated nowadays? These are the skills that human resources staff value in professionals in order to have a greater contribution in their teams. Skills are important in cross-cutting teams in addition to everything, attitude on top and knowledge. Obviously, the team is not going to have all the same knowledge because it wouldn't make sense to have a team made of professionals with same certifications, same qualifications, same skills. We do not want robots. Robots will come in the future and they will do their task. But what professional skills are more appreciated nowadays? One of them is adaptability. Adaptability means that I, have, I can be flexible and I can adapt in order to reach targets. You do not have to just say, yes, yes, I can do it. You just have to be flexible and adapt yourself to different problems, to different challenges, to different work groups, to different uh, things that happen every day. So if there are any changes, I need to be able to adapt to them. I need to have uh, flexibility in order to uh, show my attitude and passion in every challenge I might find. Also, problems analysis. It is very much appreciated to incorporate in a in a team, in a professional team, a person who can, who is quite an analytic, which means that they have a broad perspective in order to identify problems and solutions. Usually when we are facing a problem, we try to solve it from the beginning to the end. And sometimes it is, it is easier to cut it into small pieces in order to solve each piece at a time and that analytic reasoning is quite important and is going to be supported by all the knowledge that we carry in our backpack. Continuous learning is also very important. We need to incorporate new knowledge throughout our life. Alex said that the day he stops being passionate about this, he will grow some tomatoes. And personally, I think that if I stop wanting to learn from people around me, I won't have any reason to leave because uh, learning from others it is very important. An other important skill is self-management. You don't need to ask absolutely everything. I'm not saying you just go uh, freelance and do whatever you want. You need to be organized. And this is added to the problem analysis skill. In your daily life, you're going to face many challenges. They're going to require it a lot from you, from you. And you need to organize yourself. You need to organize your time, and that's essential when working in a in a team. You need to understand how to do your tasks. You're not working on your own. You have people around you. You will get information from many places. You need to learn 
uh, is this urgent, is this important, when is it due? You need to manage your time and your energy when facing those challenges. You need to be able to manage your time and to prioritize between priorities, urgencies. Obviously, you're always going to be told everything is urgent, but you need to distinguish be between what is really urgent and what is less urgent. It is urgent to give in, uh, to hand in a project in two days, but if an emergency happens and computers stop working, then that's more urgent. So depending on what is going around, you need to distinguish between different urgencies. What else uh, do you need? Creativity and lateral thinking. So you need to think out of the box and hackers go far beyond. They apply creativity and imagination in order to solve any problem, any security incident, any uh, class project. You always need to apply that lateral thinking. That is why we say that hackers' thinking goes far beyond you cannot stay on the thinking, this is just like this. No, maybe you need to think out of the box. So maybe you can apply this knowledge to another field. And you always need to question things. You need to uh, ask yourselves, and why? Why am I doing this? You need to have your creativity, for example, to uh, create your own internet network at home. For and what is also very valuable as for professional skills? It is quite evident, but you need to know how to communicate to others. You need to develop those communication skills. And when I say communication skills, I'm not saying just speaking and adapting the message to uh, your team or maybe to, your conf to a conference or to a client. You also need to have good writing skills because maybe you are very familiar with your technician with your te uh, technician language but that language has to be understood by anyone uh, maybe people above you like your bosses or your clients so you need to organize your ideas and to uh, give them an structure and an organization Maybe you think, I do not like speak in public. I mean, when you're speaking with clients, that's already speaking in public. Of course, it is different to give a speech or to speak with your client, but uh, communication is very important in both cases, and also nonverbal communication is important. You cannot say, okay, I'm just working with computers, that's my space. No, because otherwise you would fall into the idea, into the collective idea of the hacker which is concealed in a basement with a hoodie and uh, working with gadgets. No, you need to work in teams. We do not want people to be uh, to be concealed in a room and not speaking with anybody. No, you need to speak with your team. You know, you need to know what your colleague is working on. You need to know what they are doing in order to be able to solve security incidents in a better way. Teamwork is so important, and you need to get used to working with people from different fields because cross-cutting skills are very important in cybersecurity. Alex and I have been lucky enough to have participated in the first university league in cybersecurity. University teams were uh, made of communication people, uh, security people, so people from all fields, if I understand uh, what uh, I can understand what cybersecurity is, but I need to uh, be in touch with something from legal department in order to uh, have a complete uh, team. People think I'm very good at this, and then we realize that you need to communicate, you need to work on social media as well, so you need to promote these kinds of things. You need to leave aside 
Uh, the, uh, f uh, the part of fear. Of course, leadership is another important professional skill. You need to have some abilities in order to make some influence on some people. On many occasions, leadership is uh, it's thought to be uh, um, to be bossy, and it's not the same. You need to be an example for the rest of the team. You need to motivate and to encourage your team. You need to make an influence on them. People say, I'm a leader. I know how to send orders. No, of course not. You are just uh, being bossy. Uh, so you need to make uh, to exert that influence. Do you think uh, uh, that we are forgetting anything? We said that in the backpack uh, there were many gadgets, but we wanted you to understand that a hacker's backpack is yourselves. I mean, that's why we have applied our personal opinion here to tell you uh, what to carry, because every backpack is going to be different. My backpack is going to be different from Yolanda's, of course. But knowing if I know what Alex carries, what you carry in your backpack, maybe it can help me to know what to include in mine. Of course, every backpack is going to be different, but you can always include uh, something else that anyone can uh, can have uh, giving you a piece of advice. Another important point and basic point. This is uh, quite graphic, right? You need to be coherent between how you are and how you say you are. You have to be communicative, you have to participate in fora, you need to make new contacts. If I have a contact network and say I am this person and when meeting that person is not real, that's not good. You cannot pretend to be someone you are not. You are the way you are and you need to be coherent. Lies do not lead to anything good because liars are caught very easily. If I create a false profile saying that I'm a huge professional and then you do not uh, prove to have professional values, you're not going to be as appreciated. So you need to be coherent in order not to end up like Pinocchio a big liar, but people notice when others are lying. Maybe your nose won't grow, but you can smell, you can feel the smell of a lie. When you meet somebody and they are not as they said they were. What else? You need to be professional, but you need to be human, you need to f feel empathy, because we are solving security incidents that can have affected people. We are communicating with clients, with our people. We are meeting people. So you're going to interact with people from all the fields who also have their own problems. You need to understand all the stakeholders within this uh, incident. Some people can have a good day or a bad day. That's why you need to place yourself in uh, the other's shoes. You just don't have to uh, uh, tell orders to people. You need to take into account how they can feel. You need to uh, place yourself in the other lives. You also need to be humble. You don't have to have uh, that much ego. These tablets should be affordable to anyone. We wouldn't have to buy those tablets, but ego is there. Let's be realistic. This applies to all industries and sectors. So the hu humil domizina can heal vanity, egoism, pride, 
you think if you think you're the best you're an expert and you don't need anything else no take this tablet because there is always going to be somebody who's who knows better than you and that's good I mean I like to be with people who know more than me because I will be able to learn so I can take advantage of their knowledge in order to exchange those insights. I cannot think I am the best in a field because there is always going to be somebody who knows something that I don't know. I always say that I'm in sponge mode in order to absorb new knowledge from other people. So today you may think that you don't need any help, but in two days you may need it. So you need to uh, decrease your ego in order to work in team, to work with people from other fields. So maybe these tablets should be prescribed to some people in order to reduce their ego. Being humble is not lowering your head. Being humble is being coherent and do not feel you are better than anyone else. Show you as you are. I mean, you need to act as you are. That's the best way of acting. This is me, and this is what I know to do. But you don't do not need to think I am the best in this room. And obviously, you need to be grateful because you won't be able to fill your pack on your own. You need to be grateful with the people around you because in the end they will fill your backpack little by little. You need to fill that backpack with insights from others, with knowledge from others. You need to increase your human values. You need to increase your knowledge. Some colleagues are going to recommend you some qualifications, some studies. They're going to teach you uh, something um, that you may need to uh, work on. Those colleagues are going to make the journey much more interesting because doing a journey on your own can be good at some point, but you're not going to get very far because you're going to be bored. You need to fill that backpack with the help of people around you. I hope you have understood uh, what you need to put in your backpack. You need to extend uh, some knowledge and now you're open to be grateful. So thank you very much, uh, CyberCamp, for giving us the opportunity to share with you these pieces of advice of what to put in your hacker's backpack. Thank you. I don't know if you have any question, somebody who wants to share some thoughts. Are you carrying a backpack? Good. Good morning. I wanted to ask what kind of books do you read? You said you read many books, but I don't know if those are um, biographies or books specialized. Well, I read everything, technical books and any kind of literature that can be interesting. You're going to learn from everything in order to have a broader view. So uh, if your time uh, allows you, read about fields that maybe now you're not interested in, but they can be useful for the future. You need to find a balance. You need to look for things related to your field, but you don't have to focus only on technical books. People write articles on some uh, topics, and that can help you to have a clear vision. Of course, you need to carry to follow your own opinion. Of course, there are not five essential books that you can read. I cannot recommend um, any book because in the end you need to uh, do your own journey. And as you, uh, as time goes by, you will realize what books can interest you the most. And if you don't have a physical book, you can look for information in forum because maybe uh, 
what interests you. It is quite new and quite recent, and there is not any book uh, on on that topic. But look for uh, that topic in all the in other means um, in fora and so on. Thank you. Any other question, or do you want to share what you carry in your backpack? Oh, look, another one with a backpack. Yes, I also carry a backpack, but a different one. I want to ask you around, uh, regarding laboratory. So, uh, if you have an i5 laptop with an 8 GB uh, RAM, so I, ha I have two questions. How did you start with the, l your own laboratory? And secondly, if you had to start now, what would you start from? Would you buy a Raspberry and create a web service? So, well, first question, how I started with laptops and with pieces of laptops that people were giving me uh, in order to fix them. So I started to uh, arrange um, operating systems and computers. Today, I would virtualize environments. I would use uh, computers, economic computers from all the uh, manufacturers. And then I would start virtualization. I would uh, launch applications and services to understand how they work. I did this in order to understand how things worked. And the only way for me to understand it was to build my own uh, web server, for example, or my own internet network to uh, the firewall. Uh, to create a fi firewall on my own has given me uh, a chance to uh, create a mi mini sock at my place. But I did it over uh, years and years. I had to save a lot. I have to work on holidays in order to get some uh, gadgets. Today I would start with laptops with a Raspberry Pi or. Intel look uh, equipment and to start creating virtual machines. Any other question? Nobody wants to share all the things that you carry in your backpack because we also want to learn from you. Hello. Congratulations for your presentation. I'm a bit old, but I really like cyber security, although I haven't had the chance of uh, being in this field. Alex, would you give me the opportunity to be part of your team? Of course. I mean, age is not important. Attitude is. Probably your life experience in all the fields can be, uh, um, can be an asset for the team. It can be used to encourage people with your life experience. And probably your backpack carries a vital experience, which on many occasions is not valued in society, I mean. It is not enough valued. Maybe you're asking youth and many other things, and sometimes that's incompatible because if you want me to have all that skills, uh, probably I have to be older in order to have uh, greater experiences. Vital experience is very important. Okay, you are invited uh, to the Juan de Garay uh, Cyber Security Convention. Any other thoughts? Any other questions? Hello, uh, congratulations on your presentation. As for programming language that you think I should start with in order to understand everything easier, which one would you pick? Well, I'm not going to recommend you one specifically, but start with the one that you feel more comfortable with because any 
programming language is going to help you to organize ideas. If you like Python, use Python. If you want to go, let's go for it, or JavaScript. Pick a language and start learning. And probably as time goes by, you will realize you want to learn another one. But first, you need to organize your mind before starting to type code. So first, you need to learn that part. And then the code that you need is the one that adapts better to your needs. For example, I have my own repository of scripts. Yeah, those scripts might be um, quite easy, but it helped me to start. So first, you need to organize your mind. You need to uh, understand the structures in order to apply this to code. Yeah, you need to feel more comfortable with that programming language because when you move to another one, it will be easier for you if you have already understood a structure. Then syntax is going to come easier for you. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. We're running out of time, so if there are any other questions, they can look for you outside. So please, a big round of applause for them.